Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 191 of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. I celebrate myself and sing myself, and what I assume you shall assume, for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. My tongue, every atom of my blood, formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I, now thirty-seven years old, in perfect health begin, hoping to cease not till death. Now, some podcast listeners will know those words to be the opening lines of poet Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. Whitman, who lived from 1819 to 1892, is considered one of America's most influential poets. And a recent gift from one of my sons of a comprehensive copy of Whitman's collection of poems titled Leaves of Grass prompted me to read those poems again. Leaves of Grass was self-published by Whitman in 1855 and underwent several revisions over the years as the poet worked on adding poems to his opus until just before his death in 1892. That final edition, often referred to as the Deathbed Edition, contained some 300 poems. So to talk about Leaves of Grass is often to discuss a slightly moving target, and of course because of the importance of Whitman in the pantheon of poets, I don't dare to suggest that I have any particularly new or relevant scholarship to contribute to the gallons of ink that have been spilled analyzing this important piece of American literature. Still, as I reread the poems, I was struck by a couple of things that I thought might be relevant to photography and to our study of it. These things may be especially relevant as I publish this podcast in January of 2017, a year of unusual political interest here in the United States. In his cycle of poems, Whitman celebrated a number of central themes that are clearly and easily noted. He praised and examined nature, the human body, and quite equally the human soul. His poems explore love, friendship, and intriguingly, democracy. Leaves of Grass is written in free verse, meaning that it's not strictly metered or rhymed, so it mimics the patterns of natural speech. So these groundbreaking, open, inclusive, and optimistic poems are written in long, sprawling lines. Because of his work's inclusivity and optimism, Whitman became known as the Bard of Democracy, a truly American poet and a man who came to shape our ideas of nationhood, democracy, and freedom. It's certainly important to note that Whitman lived through the American Civil War, the greatest and most costly test of the great American experiment in democracy. Whitman's approach was based on extraordinarily detailed examinations of the world around him. Those details make me think of the relatively new art of photography, new at least in his lifetime. Photography was born in the 1830s with the daguerreotype, the first highly detailed camera-based image, and it became a fully functioning piece of the world's visual lexicon, the world's visual opportunities, in the 1840s. Walt Whitman's adult life, again he was born in 1819, coincided with the development of photography from the first photographic images when he was 20 to photography's evolution into a truly popular, easily portable medium by the time of his death in 1892. Whitman often used a list or a catalog to bring to mind the variety and breadth of situations, people, or objects in a poem. He was able to cycle through hundreds of verbal images while avoiding repetition. Here's a short example uh, in a poem called I Hear America Singing. I hear America singing, the varied carols I hear, those of mechanics, each one singing his as it should be, blithe and strong, the carpenter singing his as he measures his plank or beam, the mason singing his as he makes ready for work or leaves off work, the boatman singing what belongs to him in his boat, the deckhand singing on the steamboat deck, the shoemaker singing as he sits on his bench, the hatter singing as he stands, the woodcutter's song, the plowboy's on his way in the morning 
or at the noon intermission, or at sundown. The delicious singing of the mother, or the young wife at work, or the girl sewing or washing, each singing what belongs to her and to none else. The day what belongs to the day, at night the party of young fellows, robust, friendly, singing with open mouths their strong, melodious songs. I don't know if you heard what I heard as I read that, but what I heard was a (laughs) a list of photographs. I heard a list of photographs that sounded like the descriptive power of the camera. And I hear America singing, uh, one of Walt Whitman's most beloved poems, uh, is uh, a, a great example of that way in which he used that list Uh, that catalog of the way things looked, of what was going on in the world around him. So it seems as though Whitman found in poetry uh, something that he also found in photography, a perfect match for America, something that would stand firmly on and rise natively out of the culture's democratic foundations. Photography was then a major step toward democratizing art in Whitman's eyes and, of course, in many other people's eyes. And I think one of the things that we can certainly see in today's contemporary world of photography is that photography is so widely practiced by so many people that it has become, in fact, the most democratic of all art forms. To Whitman, both poetry and photography embraced the world in a literal way, and Leaves of Grass explored the photographic nature of poetry and often used photographs as a metaphor. In fact, Walt Whitman's name doesn't appear on the title page of the first edition of Leaves of Grass. Instead, he gives us the thing itself, his own photograph, a daguerreotype, in a casual pose. Later on, he said about that, The contents of the book form a daguerreotype of my inner being, and the title page bears a representation of its physical tabernacle. The new poetic photography of Leaves of Grass pans across the American scene just the way the camera would. It wasn't that the camera or Whitman's poems were merely reproductions of the world either. Both his poetry and his photography were a marriage of eye and machine, of the human and the technological, of the imaginative and the mechanical, just like photography is. There are other parallels here between Whitman's poem and the photograph. Neither Whitman's observations nor the photographic images are generated automatically, like the photographer who uses selectivity and framing and awareness of his or her surroundings, Whitman's observations of the world are similarly framed and considered. Like the photographer, Whitman begins with facts, but transforms those facts into ideas. By looking at the way Whitman photographed the world in his poems, we can see how all the elements of the physical world are crucial to the world's wholeness. Whitman's faith was the same faith that we put in photography, that any object or experience could be given new importance by recording it on a previously blank page. Both the camera and the poem, it seems to me, in Whitman's eyes, could be non-discriminating. Both could embrace the world in a literal way, and like photography, Whitman's Leaves of Grass uses simple language to convey complex ideas. It's important to note, though, that Whitman was cautionary about merely looking at the surface of things. It was important that he and his readers get at the real truth, the real truth underlying the facts. One section of Leaves of Grass begins, of the terrible doubt of appearances, of the uncertainty, after all, that we may be deluded. (laughs) It's that terrible doubt that Whitman works through in Leaves of Grass. Out of his examinations come a rich portrait of this modern world, the modern world that he inhabited, one that rose from the wild American continent. And in case we think that the answers can be found in the word pictures or photographs that he makes in his poetry or that photographers make with cameras, he warns, Poet, beware lest your poems are made in the spirit that comes from the study of pictures of things and not from contact with real things themselves. So he kind of warns us about the idea that we have to really get out and experience the world on our own. Uh, 
On both the Camera Position website and the PDF that comes along with the app, I'll include a link to an interesting story about photographer Edward Weston's association with Whitman's Leaves of Grass. Weston produced a set of photographs to accompany a publication of Whitman's poems in 1941, some of which are reproduced at the link that I'll share. The book was a failure, but Edward Weston considered his 1941 photographs for Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass as some of his best work. And I think if you look at Weston's photographs of America combined with uh, Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass poetry, uh, you'll see both him and Whitman in a new and interesting light. So, as we enter this new year, as we enter this new time in uh, the world, uh, a world where there is more uncertainty than perhaps there has ever been, uh, let's employ the uniquely democratic qualities of our chosen medium of photography to explore our own vision, the vision of our fellow citizens and the vision of the cities and states and nations where we live. Thanks for joining me in uh, this episode of Camera Position, and I look forward to having you back on a future episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. Mm -hmm.